Wednesday. I've heard from everyone that there was a major test today. They didn't tell me what class. <sighs> I wish it was social studies. I'm amazing in that class. I've turned many D's into A's in tutoring. Sadly, it was math, which I'm awful at. Doesn't help the seeing chart change again. Now I sit behind Joel Carlson, some weirdo in Bryce Anderson's friend group. I know he copies off of people in class, mostly Alex Aruda and me, but he still goes to tutoring. For some reason, he stays in there for the longest time. Speaking of tutoring, today Rowley walked into my class. He's best friends with Greg Hefley. Most people don't really like him, and a lot of people at my table gossip about him. Mostly Patty, though. But I kind of like him. I once screwed up with him, though, and called him frankly by accident. I could tell it impacted him slightly. And it still keeps me up at night. Um, isn't your name Fregley? No, that wasn't his name. Uh, why can't I remember? Anyway, I was helping Rowley with his schoolwork. After that, he said he still had 20 minutes until his parents pick him up. I talked to Rowley and he does open up on some things he likes. I took the chance and asked Rowley about Greg, but he seemed really nervous at first when I asked him that. But he told me that he was a great guy. But... He said something that I was really confused about. He said something like, Greg isn't planning to talk to you tomorrow after final hour of the day. Firstly, well today Greg, the guy I had a crush on in middle school, wants to talk to me after school. It's probably something really small. He might just need help with tutoring. I finally got done with science, but while walking I looked in one of his senior classes and saw Greg's brother. Apparently he owns a band. I've heard people listen to his songs from SoundCloud. And apparently they're just okay. In social studies, I asked people on my table at Greg. Patty responded instantly and started listing off a bunch of things he did in middle school. So, Patty, what do you know about Greg? Oh, he's the absolute worst. In the Wizard of Oz musical, he threw apples at me for literally no reason. I mean, what did I do to him? Man, I've been waiting all day to see what Rally was talking about. It's obvious he's good at keeping secrets. After class, I ran to the hallways. I looked around for Greg, but couldn't see him. I was outside and decided to wait for a minute. Eventually, Greg didn't approach me. <laughs> hey, Holly. Uh, there's something, something I I wanted I want to tell you. Sure. What is it? I, I like you. C please date me. I, I can't believe it. Oh my god, this is insane! I, I smiled and told him that we should get to know each other and have pizza later this week. I gave him my phone number. Ah, I've literally been waiting for this moment for a while. I can't wait till Saturday. I want to make a good impression on him, but I'm scared of embarrassing myself. But then again, he was the one who asked for this. He also seemed really nervous about it too, so I'll be fine. He's probably going to judge himself way too much and not judge me. My sister didn't arrive in her car and told me to get in. While driving, I saw Greg talk to Rally on the way home. So, how did I go with Holly, man? Bear and I fought. She told me to meet her on Saturday. Amazing, Greg. I knew you could do it. I used to have a friend I was super close with, but sadly they moved away to Michigan when middle school started. I never got into contact with them again. And last year I got bored and tried to look up their name. Sarah Barber on social media. It sucks that her name is very common because I couldn't find anyone who looked like her. In our last year of school together, before Christmas break, she gave me a present. It was some cheap yellow earrings. I know my parents won't want me to have earrings, but after she left for good, I've worn them every day I could. Firstly, reread -re what I wrote above, but I haven't actually thought of her in a while. It feels too weird to think about her after all this time. Also, my sister was on the phone with someone. Apparently, she was making plans to meet with whoever she was talking to. After she hung up, I asked her to drop me off on Saturday. Uh, hey sis. What? Can you, can you please drive me to Priscilla's Saturday? <sighs> I guess, why not? Besides, I need to be in that area anyway. That's great. Also, who were you talking to earlier? That's none of your business. Ever told me she will drive me there? And I assume that the person she was talking to is also near the area. I don't know what it is, but it's probably none of my business like she said. But I'm glad I have now Greg to talk to. I really was alone for the last few school years. 
I've hanged out with so many people at parties, but was never really close to anyone. Friday. Well, tomorrow's a big day. I took 20 bucks out of my birthday money for the date tomorrow just in case he didn't bring anything. Also, Joel Carlson was at tutoring today. He was always weird around me, but he's just trying to be flirtatious. So, I decided to tell him to stop. Joel, listen, you're probably a nice guy, but come on, stop acting weird around me. Besides, I have a date tomorrow. Huh? You do? After I said that, he went quiet. Then seemed pissed slightly and just left. Kinda weird, but what did he expect? It was probably a mistake to tell him that. He is a weird kid, but for some reason sits at the popular lunch tables. Hopefully he doesn't tell those tables that. If they found out it's Greg, it would be trouble for both of us. And hopefully Patty also doesn't find out. I did say sorry to him on the way out, and told him I could help him with his schoolwork and future tutoring, but he ignored me and just left. <sighs> Man. I thought tutoring was my escape from all the chaos at home, while also showing off what I'm good at. I'm a bit of a show off, but now I'm starting to rethink it. Also, I saw Fregley getting signed up for tutoring. I mentioned I once called Greg Fregley because he had glasses on, and I somehow couldn't tell the difference. I remember at one dance Greg was approaching me, but Fregley of course had to scare him. Rethinking back to middle school, Greg actually did show signs, but I just never picked him up though. At least, at least I got tomorrow to fix everything. Saturday. Well, today is day at Press Skills. Well, uh, not Press Skills anymore. Let me explain. When I woke up today, the TV was on the news. I wasn't focused on it. That was until I heard about the Press Skills. In other local news, local restaurant Press Skills being burnt down by Plainview resident Gary Heffley. Stay tuned for more information. What? After hearing that, I told Harris she should drop me off at Tony's. She said that she didn't want to drive over in that area of Plainview, so I did went upstairs and took 10 bucks for my birthday money and gave it to her. She gave me a weird look but told me she would drive me. She didn't got in a call if someone left me alone for a while. Since I'm leaving to go to Tony's in a few hours, I spent the time watching true crime stuff on Netflix. But that was until she told me we had to go now. Listen. I don't want to be late. We need to get going now. Um, an hour early? Uh, okay, sure, I guess. I quickly took some of my birthday money and ran outside to get in Hever's car. When we got there, she played some Justin Bieber song the entire car ride. Our mom messaged Hever wishing her good luck. I don't know what she meant by that, though. The ride only took around 30 minutes. Hever said she had to get going and left around a minute after we arrived. I sat on one of the seats and waited for Greg to arrive. I was pacing outside Tony's, but I then saw Greg approach me, sweating, and then he greeted me. Uh, uh, hey Holly, uh, good to see you. Hey Greg, it's good to see you too. After exchanging greetings, Greg followed me in line where I ordered two square cheese pizzas for both of us. I got a seat in the back corner which was way more quiet than the front which was full of families. We ate pizza and we both agreed that square pizza was way better than normal circle one. He then went quiet and was probably thinking what to say next. Greg didn't ask me about my hobbies. I told him I loved history and reading, and I even admitted I was into the Slumber Party Pal series, even though it's for 7th graders. Hey, I like that series too. I've even read the entire series. Uh, oh, I thought you'd make fun of me for enjoying it. I also told him I've watched many soap operas and reality TV shows. I told him I was watching one before my sister got her car and started driving me here. We talked about shows we liked and Greg told me his brother owns a band. Eventually I asked him what he liked and he said video games which is pretty common for boys. I have even heard him talking about it to Rowley once when I was eavesdropping on them talking. He then told me how he hangs out with his friend Rowley. I told him I wish I had a friend close to me like that. I have seen him in the halls of Rowley talking about a lot of things that kind of makes me jealous. To be honest, I always found IQ with you and Rally. I wish I had someone like that again. What? But you were always hanging out with like 30 people at every event. I told Greg that while I did hang out with a group of people at parties, they were just a group. I didn't have anyone close to me like Rally did with Greg. I only really talked to them at lunch tables or at parties that I didn't really want to go to. But he did ask me about Bryce, who is gay. We were friends for a bit, 
even though he's kind of a jerk and I was jealous of him because he probably had a crush on Greg. Speaking of crushes, I finally confessed to Greg I had a crush on him in middle school. Greg, I kind of had a crush on you during middle school. I thought I blew when I called you Fregly. Same thing. The thing is, I had a massive crush on you and thought that was my chance. After you called me Fregly, it shook me to my core and scared me from talking to you, but now I know it's because I was wearing those stupid glasses. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, that moment is one of those moments that keep me up at night. <laughs> I told him I was really excited when he asked me out as I thought I blew my chance with him. Also, I thought his confession was really cute. After I said that, he stayed quiet for some time. We then went outside and talked outside Tony's. We became silent for a bit, but I spoke up. I told him I'd love to do this again, and I had a great time. I then went for a risky move of leaning in, and we actually kissed. And I even hugged him. But then Heather messaged me saying she's pulling up soon. I then saw her car arriving on the other side of this area full of stores. I forgot what it's called. But I then heard rock music from the other side and saw a van. Probably Greg's brother. The music didn't actually seem that bad to be honest. But when Heather and Greg's brother arrived, they both seemed surprised. What? What are you doing here? I was just picking up my brother. What? I'm picking up my sister here too. What are you guys talking about? Heather came out and grabbed my hand, but then she saw Greg's brother and was really shocked at seeing each other. I didn't really understand, but Heather told Roderick, bye Roderick, see you later. We drove home pretty fast, and Heather told me on the trip that she would explain further when we got home. And after saying that, she blasted Baby by Justin Bieber at maximum volume. I texted Patty, but she didn't respond. I saw Riley talking to her, and... I hope he didn't tell Patty who I went on a date with. Patty's always had it out for Greg. She told me many things Greg has done and I kind of forced myself to reply agreeing with her. After we got home, I collapsed on the couch. Then Heather asked me if I wanted to know what happened and I said sure, why not? I thought it was going to be something big but in reality, it really wasn't. Heather told me that she had been dating Roderick in secret for a year. The reason it's a secret is because Roger doesn't want people to think he's a bad influence or ruin her reputation. But that doesn't matter anymore, Halls. We saw the issue today, and now you and his brother finally know. Sunday. Rereading this darn. Yesterday was pretty eventful. I texted Greg and he basically got the same talk I got from Heather by Roderick. I told him I'll see him tomorrow at school. Monday. Well, the school week was strange. Patty's been giving me a cold shoulder. I know she dislikes Greg for some reason. She has told me a lot of things about him at my old lunch table, but speaking of lunch, I was thinking of where to sit. I know my old table probably believes everything Patty has said about Greg. So during lunch, I sat at Greg's table, but then I remembered who also sat there. Mmm, five second rule. Bacteria doesn't touch it yet. I'm clean, I'm clean. There was Albert Sandy, who was eating his yogurt. I remember in middle school that every time I would walk past his table, he would say the most sexual things about other students, even though I knew it definitely wasn't true. Guys, did you hear that Bryce was <laughs> Polly during gym? It only took seven minutes until the other people at the table started asking me questions. Greg just tried to say that I'm his new friend, but they weren't buying it. I didn't hear Albert Sandy whisper something about me and Greg. Greglin just left the table and I did so as well and followed him. He guided me to this one table that only had one person, some girl a grade ahead of us. Apparently Greg was friends with this person in 6th grade when she was in 7th, but she moved to Ohio during the summer. She introduced herself as Angie Stidman. The seats are usually empty at this table for Angie, I guess because there has been a zebra cake roll on the ground there for at least 4 years. Apparently it's a school's version of the cheese touch. Even though I thought by now most people would grow up with dumb stuff like that. Speaking of Angie, she is nice to be around, but for some reason she likes bringing up humiliating things about Greg in 6th grade. Heh, <laughs> hey Greg, remember when Patty kicked your ass in wrestling? It was pretty funny. That sounded like something straight from a movie and fake, but Greg sounded embarrassed. He denied it ever happening, but Angie said she still had all the newspapers from middle school. 
Greg seemed really embarrassed by this, but I told him that 6th grade was a century ago. That was when he was basically an elementary kid, but we're in high school now, so it doesn't matter. Tuesday. Not much really happened today. I helped Greg cheat the social studies test, though. I did ramble saying that the early modern period was underrated, even though he didn't really understand what I was saying, or even cared about it. Wednesday. I talked to Greg today after school. I apologize for rambling about something he doesn't care about. He said it was fine. Also, Greg told me his best friend Riley has been more busy, so he can spend more time with me now. Also, Patty started to send messages after being quiet to me this entire week. Really, Holly? I saw you sitting with Greg at lunch. You know how much I hate that guy? It says he read my messages. Respond. <sighs> I was too much of a coward and didn't respond. I hope we can solve it soon. She has been friends with me since I moved here. When I told Greg I didn't have a friend close to me like he had with Rowley, I completely forgot about Patty. Hopefully it resolves itself soon, and maybe she'll get used to it. Friday. I completely forgot about something important last Monday. I've been trying to ignore it, but I decided I can't. Greg told me that Rowley's with Abigail of all people. Everyone dislikes her, from Patty, Bailey, even the strange ones like Fregley and Chirag out of all people. Bad news, Holly. Riley got back together with his ex-girlfriend, Abigail. Ooh, this is bad. She intentionally always caused drama. One time, she spent months learning to Photoshop, bought up for birthday money, to create an image of Bailey and Fregley kissing. Bailey's boyfriend of two years ended up breaking up with her after that. Plus, I overheard Fregley saying it sucks because Bailey's boyfriend jumped him. Now, Frankly, might be weird, but he doesn't deserve to have a lifelong scar. There are like a handful of dumb incidents like this, all thanks to Abigail's manipulation. But at least I have Greg. Now, some people find him horrible, but so far, he's been nothing but nice to me. I hope we don't have some stupid drama that tears us apart. We've been together for only a week, but it felt a lot better than all the fake relationships I've been part of. This journal is running out of pages, so... I'll buy another one in the future. So I guess this is the end. Hope you enjoyed that LLB. Here's a note from the offer. Uh, the offer actually being a long time subscriber and actually was the one who recommended me to do a reading on the original Bachelor LLB. They made this fan LLB based on Holly's side of view and I actually really enjoyed the reading and it's one of the cool things I like, seeing two sides of a story. Anyway, since we're here, let's talk about a vote. Out of all of you guys, 65 of you voted. And his results. At last place, breaking point, 15%. And the other two LLBs, The Joker and Bound by Blood, were close. Both were at 42%. But now, they won by one vote. One vote difference. And the winner between these two was The Joker. So, to whoever voted last... Just know that you were the deciding factor between which got rid first. The one who gave me the request was XKDV, currently above my head. And uh, if you're watching this, just know, out of 65 people, your request got the most votes. Anyway, that's all for today. I hope you enjoy this reading, and I hope you have a good day. Bye!